Hi, I'm Michael, the developer of Loopy Pro. I'm starting a video series which is going to cover a range of topics about Loopy Pro. It'll kind of be an addendum to John Paul's amazing Loopy Pro tutorial series. I plan to cover specific tips and tricks as well as answer questions as they come in and talk about features that you might not be aware of. There may be a few. For the first one here, I wanted to respond to a question that came in over the Facebook group. Keto here has two groups that he wants to be able to select between one or the other. He wants to be able to record on one group while the other one is playing and vice versa. He has a foot switch which has six buttons on it and he wants to be able to control the loops in those two groups with the same buttons. And he wants to be able to switch back and forth between those groups with a button press. So I thought we might dig in and see if we can create that setup for him. So we have a blank project here. We're just going to go into the editor here, open up the groups section, which is that third tab there. And I'm gonna create two mutually exclusive groups just for a starting point. So I'm gonna drag a rectangle around the first row, hit group, and same with the second one. Now I've got two groups. If I tap one of them, we can make them mutually exclusive with each other. So you'll see that two there, I'll tap that. And if we open the other one, it's now mutually exclusive with one as well. So we'll do a quick test, record this. Now you'll notice when I record a loop from the other group, it's actually going to stop all the loops from the current one. So they are completely mutually exclusive, including when you're recording. So what Keto said he wanted was to be able to record loops in the other group while the current group is still playing. So we're going to need to dig a little bit deeper for that custom functionality. We're gonna go back into the groups here. I'm just going to clear out that loop. Now, we don't want to use the built-in mutually exclusive functionality for this because of that limitation with recording. Normally, that's probably what you want, but not in this case. So we're going to turn off the mutually exclusive thing. Now they'll play together. And we're going to control the group selection using the foot switch. I have a um, blue board uh, Bluetooth controller here, which I use for testing a lot. So we'll see if we can make it work with this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bind this button here to toggle between the groups, one or the other. So the first thing we're going to do is pair this so that it can talk to the iPad. We tap the hamburger menu here, go to Bluetooth devices, and we'll just tap that to connect it up. There it goes. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a binding for this button here, which will toggle between the top and the bottom row. It will also change what the rest of these buttons here can control. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to create a binding that'll toggle between the top and bottom rows. So we open up control settings here on version 1.0 of Loopy, which is the current App Store version. That's called MIDI settings, I think, but it's changed a little bit in 1.1. I'm gonna tap current project bindings because I want this to be a part of the project profile. And we're gonna tap add new binding. So for the first action, we're gonna go play stop. I'm going to change the target to specific play group. We'll tap the top one, and I'm gonna set the action to play, then hit save. That's our first action. Now I'm going to just press this button to select that as the one that it's bound to. Now we'll add another action, and this one's going to be the bottom row. And we set the action to stop. So that is going to play the top row, stop the bottom row at the same time. Now we're gonna add another action and this is going to control the bottom row. So we go play stop, change the target to the bottom row. The action is play. Add another action and this is going to stop the top row. Action stop. And the last thing we need to do is once you have bound this to a trigger, you'll see these little circles appear at the left of the actions. I'm gonna tap this one here and you'll see there are some timing options. We want next trigger and you'll see it now says two. So the first press of this is going to play the top row and the second press is going to play the bottom row. Uh, this blue board has a thing where it has a little uh, place here you can put a uh, expression pedal in and it seems to be mal malfunctioning and it's saying hold as the trigger. So I'm just going to press it one more time to say, no, actually I really want F4 on. And there it is. So let's see if it works. So I'll just record a couple of loops. I'm just gonna turn the volume down on those loops so that you don't have to hear them. There we go. 
and we'll record just a couple of those on the top and on the bottom. And you can see that I'm able to have them playing in any way that I want at the moment. And now if I press this, it's going to play top row. If I press it again, bottom row. Now you'll notice that's happening instantaneously. You can change that in clip settings. The default setting here is loop. I just had it set to none. So with loop as the setting, you'll notice now it's gonna wait until the loop boundaries before it switches. You can set that to whatever you want, a particular bar length or whatever you like really. So that takes care of switching between the top and the bottom row while allowing you to record wherever you want. And you can also use the buttons on screen to change whatever you like. You'll notice that uh, right now, if I tap one of those, it's turning on both at the same time. Now I can change that if I want to be able to have more fine grained control. If I go to the playgroup settings, so we open up the editor, switch over to playgroups, tap in the playgroup, you'll notice it says all loops play and stop together. That's the default mode. But if we want complete control over that, we can just say loops play independently. And then the playgroups just become a group that we can address with our own actions. It won't try and change any of the playback parameters for you. And now you can see I can turn them on and off individually. So we've got that part sorted. Now we need to set up these three buttons to be able to control the rows. Uh, when the top group is selected, it's going to control the top loops. And when the bottom group is selected, it'll control the bottom ones. I think the easiest way to do this is probably to use two control profiles and switch between them. One profile that addresses the top row and one that addresses the bottom one. This will be a bit easier in 1.1 because you'll be able to have more than one control profile active at a time. So you can just turn them on and off as needed. That gives you a truly spectacular amount of control over what your devices do. In 1.0, which is the current version on the App Store, it's a little bit simpler, but still perfectly adequate for what we want to do here. You can have one control profile at a time and switch between them. The easiest way to do this is probably just to use MIDI Learn. So I'm just going to clear out these clips, open up MIDI Learn. I'm going to bind the A, B and C buttons here. So you'll notice at the top, um, it currently says global. That's what I want. The default is it'll probably say project, which is your project control profile. So I'm going to select the global one here and I'm going to rename it to top row just to make it obvious what we're doing here. And with that selected, I'm going to make three bindings. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. That addresses the top three loops. Now we're gonna make another control profile called bottom row. And we're gonna do the same thing with the bottom one. So one, two, three. And the last thing we need to do is switch between them. And we'll do that from the binding that we set up before. So we open up control settings again, current project bindings. There's our toggle action. And then we're gonna add two more actions. The first one, so right down to the bottom, switch controller profile, and we'll select the top row. Now we're going to hit reorder and move that up to the first uh, trigger. Now we're going to add one more which is for the bottom row. That's already in the right spot. So that should, on the first press, select the top clips and select the profile that addresses them. And the next press will select the bottom clips and the profile that addresses those. So we switch back here for a moment. Ah, the blue board, <laughs> there we go. F4 on is what we want. And now we should be able to press that and you'll see that it's selecting between the top and the bottom row. Let's try it here. It occurs to me that with no clips playing, I can't really see which one is selected here. So let's add one more action just to make that a little bit more obvious. I'm going to go add action, select specific clip, clip one. So we'll make it so that when you have the top row selected, there'll be a little dot beside the, uh, or inside the first clip, just so we can see what is selected here. And we'll add another one, select specific clip, the first one in the bottom row. So now we press, there's the top one, there's the bottom one. And now we can use say this one to record that clip and this one to record that clip and to toggle them on and off. And we can press this to switch to the bottom row 
and now we can address those ones. And we can touch the screen to address particular loops like that. So switch to the top, switch to the bottom. And again, if you want that to happen instantaneously, we can open clip settings, set the play and stop quantization to none so that it happens straight away. Right, so hopefully that's the use case that Keto was after. And I better get back to work on 1.1. I'll be back soon though with another video. In the meantime, I highly recommend checking out John Paul's amazing Loopy Pro tutorial series. It's absolutely fantastic and there's more episodes coming regularly. And if you're after more tutorials, I really recommend checking out Inky's Loopy Pro tutorial series, which is a much deeper dive. And if you're a real tutorial junkie, you can find a playlist of Loopy Pro tutorials at loopypro.com tutorials. Okay, I'll see you next time.